Hello people, I am Data from JGX and uh, here we are with a special Mac review. One of the most cancerous and hated Macs in the game, the Piranha. First we are starting with a review of the hitboxes. Hitboxes are pretty okay, I mean it doesn't have any special weaknesses. If it was a 100 toner, you would say that it has a big CT, but the Mac is so small and fast and the hit reg of this game is so broken because the server tick rate is too slow that it doesn't basically reg like most other fast 20 toners. Uh, not only today I'm going to teach you how to build a Prana, also, I'm going to show you how to equip a proper skill tree and some just quick tips on how to use it. So as for the hitboxes, it doesn't really matter because the mech is fast and doesn't rage that much. You can try to lag it if you find it, but anyways, it's not anymore a mech that gets uh, one shot straight away because of all the buffs that I'm going to explain you. Uh, in this video because I'm going to tell you also how this mech got to the point where it is right now and how the cauldron changed this mech. So I want to start from what it has right now. We go in the store, battle mechs, light mech, piranha. It is pretty cheap, it's very very cheap. Uh, which ones are the good ones. Uh, I'd say that they are all strong, but there is some, there are some of them that are particularly broken. The Cypher, the A, and the 1. Uh, what you do with these mechs? What are you doing with these mechs? Um, first, the agility. Uh, this mech is a gunboat. So, the same stuff that you can say on the assaults, um, like if an assault is a gunboat, then it has shit agility. I mean, there is this kind of rule in this game. If an assault is a gunboat, like for example the Darwolf, it has a shit agility and bad survival compared to other assaults. This is true also for the heavies. For example, uh, the Night Gear, it's a gunboat, and uh, because it is a gunboat, it has bad agility compared to other heavies and bad survival. But somehow, magically, this rule doesn't apply to light mechs. And when we come to light mechs, we have a gunboat, the Piranha, that also has maximum level agility, 90 XL, 178 XL, 115 turn rate. This is a stupid level of agility. It's even above some flea, it's even above some fleas. Uh, Incubus has it pretty high, but it isn't there. It's for sure above some Jenners. Uh, it is above even the hated uh, Mistlings. Even if you look at the Osiris, it doesn't get to 178 deceleration. Deceleration is what makes your mech feel snappy. So what makes your mech stop instantly and then change direction and dodge fire, that's what you need to do. It's first deceleration to stop instantly and then turn rate. Turn rate determines how well you can um, um, run around a poor assault that gets farmed at full speed. Like if you had um, less turn rate, the circle that you design when you rotate at max speed around something would have a higher radius. The higher the turn rate, the more it's your ability, the higher is your ability to design a tighter and smaller and smaller circle around what you're firing. So basically with a high turn rate what you do is that you rotate at max speed around an object staying under his legs. 
And you can do that instead of doing it at 80, 90 kph, because with less turn rate, you would have to slow down to do that. Now you can do it at 150 kph. So basically, you are unhittable. And even if the enemy can see you from above, he just cannot hit you because you're too fast and you're under his leg. The torso of the assaults of the heavies doesn't move fast enough to track such a quick, small, broken object. So the, uh, the agility values, somehow, the fact that when a mech is a gunboat, uh, it should have then less agility and less survival, it doesn't apply to some light mechs. For example, the Piranha. The Piranha, on top of being a top-level gunboat, it also has top-level agility and top-level defensive quirks. Like, it, it, this is completely stupid. This is 100% stupid. Plus 8 on a 20 tonner is, is like put, putting like plus 40 on a dire wolf. Like if a, if a light gunboat gets plus 80, then what should a dire wolf get? Plus 40 in the city? And then what should an atlas get? Plus 80? And a Fafnir with a big city? Plus 100? These values are completely cooked. They, they make no fucking sense. And that's why the mech is broken. So, um, going to the builds one by one, um, we start with the one, three micro pulses and 12 machine guns. The sustained DPS of this mech is incredibly high. It, it's just incredible. This is a farm machine. And this, I'd say, is the strongest build above all. The Piranha A does a similar build, but with heavy machine guns. The stats are very similar. I'd say it's kind of the same mech. This one, though, has more agility, but the machine guns spread a little bit more. You have ammo quirks to fit heavy machine guns instead of machine guns, which means free 50% damage buff. Then we get to the Cypher. Cypher has less sustained, but more burst. You can fit it with micro pulses and heavy machine guns, or micro two extra micro pulses in the arms and regular machine guns, but the concept is the same. Like you can do, for example, you can remove heavy machine guns, put regular machine guns, and add extra micro pulses in the arms. Uh, the concept is the same. More bursting, like you shoot four, five, seven times, you press your cool shot, you shoot another three, four times, you kill a couple of mechs, and then you run away. Because you are hot, and you have less sustained damage compared to the other ones. And then there are the, um, the troll ones. Uh, the Prana 2, for example, 15 micro pulses, and... Uh, and here you are like, what the fuck are you doing? Cauldron, put back the ghost heat on micro pulses. So, firing more than 12 micro lasers simultaneously will result in a heat spike higher than normal. False. The mech is bugged. It can fire 15 without ghosting. And I'm going to show you in a minute. So, uh... Should you buy these mechs? Yes. They, they are fucking cheap. They, they don't cost anything. It's not like buying a clan Omni mech assault that will cost you 20 million C bills. With this one, with 3, 4 millions, you're done and you're even stronger. So why waste money that way? You can, if you can achieve better performance with just with spending basically nothing. Should you buy these mechs? Yes. The Cypher, the A and the 1 are completely broken, overpowered, beyond any limit. Um, how do you skill them? Uh, machine guns don't rely on the weapon tree. Like, they don't rely on cooldown. They don't even need heat. So, what makes this mech even more broken than what it actually is is that you get free nodes. 
because you don't have to use the weaponry. Not, not all of it. If you try to run a laser vomit, an SRM, like a laser vomit without range nodes or heat nodes, it's fucking garbage. It's shit. If you try to run a sniping mech without range nodes, it's bad. It doesn't work. If you try to run a brawler without uh, an SRM bomber without heat nodes, it's bad. It doesn't work. But this mech is magical because these small weapons are so overbuffed that they work even without weaponry. So, on top of that, this mech also has other nodes that allow you to spam full survival and almost full agility. Why do you need full survival? Because another thing that is completely broken about light mechs is that their survival nodes are overpowered. Like, if you check a piranha, uh, let, let's fucking see... Um, the Piranha A. I usually run it like this, full front armor, you can share it the way you want, it doesn't matter. But let's just calculate full armor, if I put full front, let's say, okay, 40, 35, 35, okay. So if you go here, you see armor hardening plus 2.6%. Instead, if you go on an assault, for example, Let's check an annihilator. Usual DACA, where is the usual DACA one? There you go. It's only 1%. So by spamming full survival on these small mechs, you actually get a lot of survival. And you should always spam full survival on these mechs. On top of that, as I told you, machine guns don't really need uh, heat, cool down, they don't need that. So you're just free to put more acceleration, more deceleration, more speed, so you can register damage even less and make that armor count even more. So in the end, the agility of this one ends up being 108 acceleration, 210 deceleration. It's a fucking ridiculous. This is ridiculous. It's as if it has a free mask <laughs> active all the time. It doesn't make any sense. 142 turn rate. What the fuck is this shit? If you compare it to an assault, which only has 40 turn rate, some like the Annihilator or the Darwolf even less, Let's compare it with another 180, 85, Arctic Cheetah 75, 104, 105 turn rate, Cougar 73, 78, and uh, 100 turn rate. Then you go here, <laughs> 108 acceleration, 210 deceleration, 142 turn rate on top of having top level weapons, assault, DAC assault level of DPS. This shit has the same DPS of a DACA assault. And also it has this kind of speed and maneuverability. This is insane. Like, and now, how you use this mech? Ah, first, before we get there, I want you to, to have a comparison. Like, this is a 20 toner and has 35 armor in the right torso, 35. A mech that weights five times as much, five times as much, and whose side torso is as big as the entire piranha, and also on top of that, not only is as big as the entire piranha, it's also very slow. Bigger, slower, it means that it is easier to hit this component and destroy it. Just to let you have a glimpse of how fucking tanky a light is compared to an assault. Even if you put full survival tree on this one, and you shouldn't because survival tree on the assaults doesn't do anything first, and then on the assault you are forced to bring weapon tree and heat tree 
and rate of deprivation because otherwise you just die by alarms, otherwise you just overheat, otherwise your weapons just don't work, so you don't have room for survival tree like you do on light max. Now I'm gonna show you how ridiculous is the armor gap in between them. So a Piranha 20 tonner has 35 on the side torso, a mech that is five times heavier, but, it, but it's also slower and bigger, instead of having five times at full skill tree, which means that it should have 175 armor on the side torso, it only has 95. That's a fucking joke. That's a fucking joke. Because when you shoot a laser vomit alpha on a piranha, most of it won't even reg, even if you hit it, and you have to hit it. And once you try to hit it and you hit it, and it's not guaranteed that you hit it, most of that damage won't even reg because of the server tick rate. Instead, on an annihilator, you can't really miss it. You shoot a couple of alphas, and this mech is halved. So we have now lights that are tankier than assaults. Now, how do we, did we get to this point exactly? Now, I'll show you just briefly a small part of um, a tree. Sorry, a small part of, um, of a sheet. I cannot give you the link. I'm not allowed. Uh, yeah, I'm not allowed to show you this link. Uh, this just compares stats before the cauldron and after the cauldron. If you see these mechs, Prana, uh, they decided that the agility, old Excel, new Excel, old Excel, new Excel, had to go up by 20 points. D cell, again, uh, Piranha, A, turn rate, old, new. So the buffs on the agility were extreme, considering that, um, for example, assaults, buffs on the assaults were minimal. For example, an assault received a buff of plus two points, three points, like they already couldn't move. And they got two points, three points. This one got 20 points, more than 20 points, and so on. So how did we get here? The agility is cooked. It's completely overbuffed. And then, on top of this, the main weapons that they use, uh, starting from the micro pulses, they received a damage buff, from 2.7 to 2.8, they got buffed on heat before from PGI itself. They, they just got continuously buffed and buffed and buffed and buffed while other weapons kept being nerfed and nerfed and nerfed. And then when the cauldron came in, they buffed their optimal range by around 40-50%. The optimal range was around 90 meters before the cauldron. It went up by something like 40, 45 percent, just to let you have an idea of how much is that buff. Even ER large lasers that are meant to be a sniping weapon, they got a buff of like 10 percent in terms of range, 10 percent, that's all they got. And these ones that are not even supposed to have range got a 45 percent fucking buff in terms of range. After that, you go with uh, the survival quirks that have no reason to exist. Even at base level, the mech survives too much for the damage that it is allowed to do. And then we also went with machine gun ammo quirks. But you might argue, they're just more ammo. No, it isn't more ammo. An ammo quirk is what lets you swap regular machine guns with heavy machine guns because without the ammo quirk you would run dry very fast and you would be forced to remove the heavy machine guns 
and put regular machine guns so you can have ammo to sustain a game. So basically that ammo quirk means that you get a free upgrade from regular machine guns to heavy machine guns. Which means that you get an upgrade from 1 DPS to 1.5 DPS. This, mean that, this means that this mech, on top of receiving absurd agility, absurd survival quirks, it also got 45% more range on the pulses, more range as well on the clan heavy machine guns they had less a couple of months, three, four months ago, and 50% damage buff. This one received 50% damage buff on top of all the rest. And this is how we got where we are now. And then I still hear some, I don't know how to call them, pepegas, ignorance, biased in favor of uh, this kind of cancer. I mean, I understand it's funny to take this shit and, and shit on the game. It's kind of funny to do that, but it's cancer. It destroys the player base. It's not healthy for the game because you cannot fight against this mech because it's so fast that you can't even see it. If you look down, the mech is too small, you can't see it. And you don't even, most Pepegas say, oh, you just one shot it, blah, blah, blah. Look how much armor it has. If you hit it with a dual heavy gauze in the CT with the skill tree I gave you, you won't even kill it because it's 50 damage. 40 plus 17, it's 57. You can hit, look at this, 35 plus 14. You can hit, I don't know, two heavy PPCs on the side torso, it won't pop. You can hit it with a double AC20 on a fucking XL torso, it won't die. It won't lose the torso because it has too much armor if you hit it because it's also too small and too agile, so you can't even hit it. This trash is unhealthy for the game. It, do it doesn't work like that. You cannot put into the game this shit that ruins people's experience. Because once we're talking about range, it's easy. The game is full of hills, it's full of buildings, it's full of canyons, it's full of everything. If you see a sniping mech, you just hide in a canyon and you go somewhere else. It's fucking easy to go the long way around, to hide in a canyon, to use a brawling place. But once you have this mech under your legs, what do you do? You can't fight, you can't run, you can't do anything, you can't avoid it. What, what do you do? How are you supposed to play against this shit? You cannot do anything, it has no counters, aside from some very specific builds, but that's not the point. You can't go on rock, paper, scissors or extreme, because otherwise you have the feeling of the mech lab loss, and that your skill doesn't matter, because you win or lose just depending on the shit that you selected in the mech lab, and not because of your skill. You feel just hopeless every time, and you feel that the output does not depend on you. Which is why Solaris died. And it is basically a shit game, a shit way to balance, to balance a game. Some other Pepegas go around saying, yes, but it has to get on you. Of course it gets on you. It's as tiny as a rock, and it goes 150 kph. Of course it gets on you. It just, the pilot of the piranha just needs to have more than one neuron active t at the same time to make it work. All you need to do is to put your dick in your pants, wait two or three minutes until your teammates start engaging each other, and then when the main fight has started and the two teams are focused, mentally focused on killing each other, then you go in the back. Like, I cut my videos because I can't have them going for hours. But I cut the part in which I sit and I literally go on YouTube for three minutes when the game starts. 
I literally wait in my spawn for two, three minutes. Because the best way to get yourself killed with this mech is just eh, push, 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 boom, dead. Of course, you can't push alone versus 10 mechs. The game is not that broken in favor of this shitty playstyle yet. This mech works. It's stupidly easy to farm with this mech. You just need to put your dick inside your pants, wait two or three minutes, wait for your team to engage the enemy team, then go the whole long way around and attack people in the back. They can't kill you, they can't react, they can't turn in time. You'll insta-crit all of their weapons because the weapon survival HP pass was a fucking joke. And you're just gonna win. It's super easy to do this. Are you sick of this kind of gameplay? I am. And if you are like me, I'll leave you a link down below in the description. With that link, you can go to the Cauldron Feedback channel. It's a channel where people give their feedback on the status of the game. If you are sick of that shit as I am, feel free to go there and give your opinion. Your opinion matters. Now I'm going to quickly show you what happens um, with these mechs on, um, in the testing round. First, I want to show you the bugged one. Uh, the one that said doesn't have ghosted. Um, please have in mind that um, these mechs in the testing round have um, a lot of back armor, more than they should, because in game, if you just put that much back armor, you just get one shot from the front. You can't run around with that much back armor. And still, even with that much back armor, uh, first of all, the ghost heat. This is supposed to have massive ghost, because it's max 12, no ghost. This one is firing 15. When you get the ghost hit, you see a massive spike in the bar that here doesn't exist. It just increases gradually. There is no spike. So this mech should ghost hit, but it's bugged and it doesn't ghost hit. Um, this is the power pretty much. Um, it's 2.8 multiplied per 15. This is 40 Airspace damage. Online. So every time I'm shooting, I'm dealing the damage of more than two AC-20s. So this is a Jaeger mech with two AC-20s that runs at 150 kph. This is a Jaeger mech with two AC-20s that runs at 150 kph and it is too small to get hit. And I get in the back of people, that's one, that's it, boom, dead. Boom, get wrecked, and hit, shoot. That's it. That's it. I mean, I understand that some sort of griefers may like this, but this shit is unhealthy for the game. It doesn't, the game shouldn't work like that. This is trash. It is not fun. This is the one with basically um, maximum sustained DPS. With this, basically, you can shoot as long as you want without overheating. And even with the, the reduced crit rates, the, we actually, the reduced crit rate didn't, uh, weren't implemented yet, but they're not going to change anything. I wanted to say, even with the increased weapon HP, because the weapon HP pass dropped, so weapons have more health right now, I'm gonna show you what happens when you get hit in the back on an open component 
with machine guns. Look at that AC-10 inside of the right torso of this mech. This doesn't even need any comment link. Online. This is just clown level of overpowered. The other ones are not that different. I mean, it's the same shit. I'm not going to show you them, all of them, one by one, because the, the other one, the A, it's the same thing. Uh, the, the, the three, same thing as the one. The Cypher is a mix between both. They all pretty much work in the same way. I can show you just the Cypher to show you the mixed one, how it works. I show you the maximum... Um, DPS one, and I'm gonna show you the, the mixed one that has a bit of both, but they, they don't really behave that much differently from, from each other. You just go in the back and, and, you, and you kill people for free without any engagement, any skill, you just face hug people, Target no acquired. skill, like the mech is as big as your screen, you can't miss it. Even if you want it, because the mech is just too big and you can't miss it. Zero skill requirement here. Just go in the back. Same shit. Well guys, that's it for today. If you guys enjoyed this kind of content, smash the like button, subscribe. Remember to give us your opinion in the cauldron feedback channel and i'll catch you guys next time